Hey everyone, it's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com. I'm in Taipei, Taiwan, and we were not really planning to do much today. I wasn't sure if we were going to have time to do this, uh, but sort of on a whim, Ying and I have decided to take a day trip to Jofen, which is a little town, a picturesque touristy town about an hour from Taipei. And then from there, we're gonna hopefully go to Keelung City to go to a night market and eat lots of delicious food. So there are a number of different ways that you can get there, but we've decided to take the bus. And so I got the directions off Wikipedia Travel. Uh, and we just arrived at Zhengshao Fuxing uh, Metro Station. And from here, we are going to take a bus. So we just got out of the metro at exit number one and made an immediate right U-turn. And then it said, the direction said to make a left, your first left, which should hopefully be on this big street, this main street here. And then hopefully we will see the station. Oh, I think that's the bus right there. Oh, I think I see the bus. Let's run. Number 1062 to Jungsha. Oh, here's all right, and it goes from Taipei to Jingwishi. I'm not sure exactly how much it costs, but I think we can use our smart car, our easy card. Thank you. Thank you. We're on the bus, and yeah, that was fairly easy, and I think we got lucky to uh, just get there right as the bus arrived. took just over an hour from where we got on. So not too long of a bus ride. Right at the bus stop, we have a pretty good view uh, of the bay area below. And then right over here is a temple as well. We don't really have too many plans while we're here, but just to walk around and maybe sit at a cafe, eat some snacks and have lunch. Uh, but we are gonna walk towards the Jishan Street which is a walking old street where they have a lot of snacks and uh, souvenir shops, I think. It is absolutely packed with people and tour groups, uh, but I was hoping it wouldn't be so busy because we're here on a Monday, but it is packed out. Lots of food on both sides of the lane, and it all is creating a fusion of an aroma that just smells incredible. That is making me hungry. Oh, that looks good, like stuffed tofu. I'm not sure of what is all available here, so we're just gonna do a little walkthrough to see what's available before we do anything. But I am starting to get hungry. We just stopped in a little shop uh, that is serving both squid and grilled snails. And so I wanted to try the grilled snails. We got three snails. This is all the meat, and that is that is a lot of meat from three snails. Uh, but she took out the shell, she took them out of the shell, um, and then sliced them up with a scissors into bite-sized pieces, and then put them on a, looks like they're sprinkled with just a, a bit of pepper, and then put them on the plate along with a sauce. Oh, and this must be the, that must be the end of the, snail and served with what looks like a little bit of ketchupy sauce and soy sauce I think. I have no idea what type of snails these are but they are big. Mm. Oh that's almost like squid but softer and oh that's very meaty and that's, that's good yeah that's good. Mm. That tastes like halfway between squid and a scallop, and then grilled squid, which you cannot go wrong with. Oh, that's right off the grill. Really hot, uh, really fresh tasting, and just a little bit chewy, but not too rubbery. Very good. Oh. <laughs> As we were eating these snails and squid, we met up with Timothy, who is from Hong Kong. 
Nice to meet Timothy. Thank you, man. Thank you. See you soon. Yes. The squid and snails were both excellent. Uh, now continuing on our walk through the old town. Uh, this town, apart from the humidity and the tropical heat right now because it's summer in Taiwan, it almost feels like we are somewhere in the Himalayas, like in Darjeeling or in Gangtok. But it has that kind of mountain town feel to it. Another snack that I want to eat is a tea egg. So I see the tea egg stall right there. Look at that, that's just a basin of eggs boiling in tea. It looks like a, it looks like a fireplace. I bought one tea egg right out of the simmering basin of tea. Um, this one looks like the shell is already coming off a little bit and have a, a skin around it. But yeah, this is one of the ultimate Taiwanese snacks available at 7-Eleven and Family Mart and all, all over the place. They're easy to eat and they taste pretty good. It does smell like black tea but also has kind of a braised soy sauce aroma to it as well. Oh, just a little guy. Mm. Yeah, that's like a hard-boiled egg, but it's more, the yolk is more creamy, and the white is more bouncy than uh, just a regular hard-boiled egg. And then it has just a, a saltiness from soy sauce, as well as uh, that earthy flavor from tea. Ying decided to stop by the, what is that place called, the Hanlin Tea House uh, because she saw they are serving some fried chicken little nuggets, so she's going to try that, so I'm waiting here and I hope she will give me a taste. I will taste one of them. Mm. Very crispy and yeah, pretty greasy. We are walking down the steps, uh, which is probably the most picturesque, and there are lots of tourist shops on both sides of the lane of the staircase, as well as restaurants and cafes and tea shops and little places to relax at. I think we have decided to maybe stop in at one of these restaurants, coffee shops, and stop to eat a little bit and to just relax for a bit. We're really hot and sweaty walking around, so we decided to step into one of the restaurants. And there are a lot of sit-down restaurants, but they all sort of look similar. They're kind of touristy, uh, but this one looks all right. Uh, we just ordered two dishes since we've been doing a lot of snacking, and we'll continue to do more snacking. So we just wanted to sit down for a little bit of food and just to relax mostly. The main dish I ordered is called three cup chicken, which is supposed to be cooked with equal parts of soy sauce, sesame oil and rice wine and so that's those are the three cups uh, and then it's probably braised in that liquid looks like with some um, a little bit of herbs and spices and it looks smells really good oh and loads of garlic and yeah smells very good um, I'm gonna test this out this will be my first time to have this in Taiwan mm. Oh, that tastes just like my mother's cooking. She used to make uh, soy sauce braised chicken like this a lot when I was growing up. It has a really nice soy sauce flavor um, and soy sauce saltiness. And then I can really taste the ginger in there as well as the sesame oil. And I think those are chicken thighs, so the meat is juicy as well. Look at that bowl of rice, that is stuffed nicely. Actually, I don't even know if I can I don't even know if I can get this with rice in one bite. It's so big. Oh. That has to be eaten with rice. It's so, they go so well together. These are chayote leaves. 
I think it's it's very light. Uh, just stir fried with garlic, I think. Lunch was very good. I enjoyed that chicken. Very comforting food for me. And now we are walking back up the staircase to the main part of the market. the many very popular things to eat is sweet taro balls and so you can either order them hot or cold and we got them cold with ice and so she had this big soupy mixture of taro and little fruits and little beans and things and then she put it in a cup and then added a few more extra ingredients and then topped it with ice so I think I think that's a taro ball I got to get a taro ball in my bite oh and, and how about a bean with that there we go Not too sweet. Um, the taro balls kind of taste like mochi rice bowls, except they are starchier. And then that's nice and icy cold, refreshing. Mm. After walking around and fighting these crowds, I need a coffee right now. I had the same type of coffee a couple days ago at that other market. Uh, and yeah, the coffee drips through the grinds here goes down through the test tube, through the circular tube, and then drips below. And that is some good, I guess it's cold, yeah, I guess it's cold drip, cold brew coffee. Got my iced coffee, and yeah, I love those hourglass coffee makers, which I guess are getting pretty popular in Taiwan because we saw it at that other market and I had it a couple days ago, which was excellent as well. I love it. I love it. It's strong. Uh, it's very smooth, and that and that almost has a chocolatey flavor to it. I could drink this all day long. We are getting out of the market, and we are walking up the street, going to look for the bus station, uh, and on our way to Keelung City for the night market. onto the bus, which is bus number 788, and we had good luck again. As soon as we arrived to the bus stop, the bus was right there, so we ran on the bus, we got on, uh, and now we are on our way to Keelung City. We got off the bus one station before the train station here. And I think that it's a little bit closer to the market that we're going to, the night market. Uh, so I believe, according to my map, the night market is going to be right across the street over there. And that's where we are going to check out right now. All right, here we go again for another night marketing. Uh, there are so many night markets in Taiwan, uh, and this is one of the most famous, and there is just a boatload of food. And by boatload, I mean there's a lot of seafood here. No, I mean there is a ton of food to eat. Uh, right now, I think we're just going to take a little walk through and see what is all available, and then decide on what to eat. We're coming to an intersection with the famous yellow lanterns that mark uh, this distinct, uh, make this, this night market distinct. I think we're gonna stop at this stall uh, for the crab thick soup. It's like, We just got a bowl of crab soup and got it to go so that we can walk around and eat it and look for more food, but I gotta sample it right now. It's um, a little bit thick and it looks like there are needle mushrooms and bamboo shoots in here and then she added a few pieces of nuggets of crab. I gotta have that crab on that first bite. And then let me get some of those 
goodies as well. Mm. Oh, that's that's tasty. Oh, it's not too strong in flavor, but it just has a really well a comforting flavor to it. The crab is very tender, um, just sort of falls apart in my mouth, and then the soup. It almost has a like a corn, a sweet corn kind of flavor, but I don't think there's sweet corn in it. Maybe that comes from the bamboo shoots. And then that crab literally just melts in your mouth. It is, the crab is wonderful. Wonderful, boneless nuggets of crab. Okay, here's something extremely funny. There is like amazing pork noodle soup and dumplings on both sides of us. And then walking through the middle of the lane is an advertisement for McDonald's. That is hilarious. I wonder if there are any takers in the crowd. Okay, let's... next up we're gonna try to sit down at this stall because they look like they have some really good dumplings. Uh, fried, pan fried dumplings, as well as little salads and little plates of things. So if we can find a table, we are gonna sit down and eat here. Okay. That is a different place, Germania. We got a table sort of uh, off to the side in a little alley, but this restaurant is popular and it is fast and furious. They are uh, cooking dumplings and serving plates of food crazy fast and this is uh, just a, an energetic food environment. Okay, so these dumplings are like finger shaped um, and they are wrapped with pork and a pork mixture and then I think green onions in the middle and then they are cooked on a skillet uh, but just on one side so that they really uh, turn brown and scorched on one side and the rest are just kind of like uh, noodly on the top. Oh, these look good. I'm gonna dip it into the sauce. And this sauce, I think, is just vinegar and soy sauce. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that is delicious. Oh, there are so many green onions in there that it has a fresh crispness to it. Then that pork is really soft, and the wrapper is beautiful. Um, the wrapper is gummy, but on that one edge, the bottom edge, it's crispy, and wow, that's, that's tasty. That's delicious. It has a little bit of a smoky flavor from that bottom crispy edge on the bottom. And they're so hot and fresh. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's a world-class dumpling. Okay, these are uh, pickled cucumbers, which I've really been loving eating here in with garlic. Um, yeah, I've really liked them eating them here in Taiwan. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They're so crisp and then salty and just a little bit sour. And then the tofu, which I have no idea how this is prepared. Well, that has a, it's not a crumbly tofu. That's kind of a very smooth tofu and just very light and kind of fluffy, but kind of kind of cheesy at the same time. Yeah, it kind of has a texture of cheese. I think that has given me a new appreciation for fried gyoza dumplings. Just incredibly good and perfectly fried. That was awesome. And then those pickles to go with it, just, that was just a beautiful combination. After eating those gyoza, I'm actually pretty happy and pretty satisfied. Uh, but there's one thing I am so curious about that we gotta try, and it's from stall number 58, and they call it a nutritious sandwich. And it has an extremely long line, and I do not think it looks very nutritious, but we are gonna find out. It's, I'm just too curious, I gotta try it. We just got one nutritious sandwich. And this is, this thing looks pretty incredible. Um, it's basically deep fried, some kind of deep fried bread. And I don't know what that little outside 
uh, like crispy things are. And then they filled it with slices of tomato, ham, cucumber, wedges of boiled tea eggs, I think, and then some kind of a lot of some kind of white sauce, which I, I'm not sure what it is at all. And that is the nutritious sandwich. It looks like on my first bite, I'm gonna get some of the white sauce and a piece of ham and then some of that bread. Mm. Okay, that is, that almost tastes like a donut. The, the bread, like a, like a crispy donut. Then I'm not sure exactly what that sauce is, but it, it kind of has a mayonnaise-y, sour taste to it. It's a little bit sweet, and then I think that's a piece of bologna I got. I don't think I got any healthiness in this bite. I think that the healthiness, the nutrition, is coming in the next bite with the cucumber. It kind of tastes like a cross between mayonnaise and whipped cream. It's, a, it's definitely a little bit sweet. Um, okay, now I'm gonna get take one more bite. The nutritious sandwich was not my personal favorite. Uh, but it is definitely something interesting to try and it really has that kind of donut savory mixed uh, taste and and feel to it uh, but I think we are satisfied here I think we are gonna head to the train station now and go back to Taipei uh, but this market is impressive for the food a ridiculous amount of things to eat uh, you could come here probably every night for a month and graze on new things. We are on our way walking to the train station, but let's just stop by and take a look at the harbor. So Keelung City is uh, famous for their harbor, and that's why there's a lot of seafood in this town as well. across the street on this blue crosswalk and I believe the Keelung train station is right over there on the other side of the intersection. Actually it looks like we came in the old entrance and now we are entering into the new train station. Okay they said we can use the easy card so let's see if it works. <laughs> Wait, was I supposed to do that? Oh man. Oh. What did you do, Ying? Oh, okay. Oh man. Okay, it's just here. We had to sort of run to the train because we didn't want to miss it, and it's leaving in just a couple minutes. But I don't know if I managed to catch that on camera or if. Uh, it makes sense. What you're supposed to do, I guess, is put your card, uh, just touch it on the touch card, just to check yourself into the train. But I saw that um, slot where I guess that's where you put a, if you just buy a one ticket, that's where you put your card. Uh, but I put that whole easy card in there and it like shot out the other side of the, the gate, which was pretty hilarious. I hope I caught that on camera. Uh, but anyway, we are in the train now and heading back to Taipei. Out of everybody in this entire city, and when we are on the train from uh, Keelung City back to Taipei, we bump into Raymond and Joe and his father uh, just completely randomly again. Uh, so good to see those guys. And now we are back in Taipei and we just arrived at our metro sta station and gonna head back to our hotel now. We're back at the hotel now and this was a day trip that I wasn't sure we were gonna have time to make, but now that we've returned, I'm really glad we did it. Uh, Zhou Fen Market is very touristy, but at the same time, it's very picturesque and very just pleasant to visit and lots of good food, great views, uh, and overall, a very nice place. Uh, then on to the night market in Keelung City. That was just a food lover's paradise. So much good food. Uh, I didn't get to try nearly everything, but what I did try was fantastic, and the overall just energy and buzz of the place was also amazing. I will write about both markets and everything we did over on migrationology.com, uh, so head over there to check out the full posts. And I want to say a big thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. 
And thank you again for watching. See you on the next video.